Hello, on this episode of Sven's Death Guard blog, uh, I'm going to be looking at expanding my troop choices. Hello, it's Sven here, and if you've been following along with my Death Guard blog, you know that I've been building up my Death Guard army, and you've seen that I've got some troops already sorted out in the form of my Death Guard Plague Marines. Um, I really like the Plague Marines, I've played a few games with them um, already. You know, great troops to put down, um, just in terms of the toughness and resilience. However, uh, the size games that we're playing at the moment, where we're playing um, 25 to 30 point power games, 25 to 30 power games, um, it's quite limiting on the size of the force I can take because five plague marines is six power full squad of 10 12 power um, and obviously by the time you've paid for a lord and something else to go along with them your your, your power has gone so i want some alternatives uh, for troop choices that i can use in different scenarios so for example um, where i want to have some bigger units that can move off and capture objectives um, rather than having one big powerful unit have a couple of smaller units that can maybe go into there so i've decided my next troop choice is going to be pox walkers so why pox walkers next i was going to do my cultists i'll be honest however looking at the models i've got for the cultists um i need to do some um kit bashing and, and some parts finding to be able to build out some of the weapons that I don't have for the cultists, so to give them heavy stubbers and flamers. So putting them aside for the moment while I source those parts and do those conversions, I thought I'd do the Poxwalkers next. Poxwalkers are very similar in terms of power rating, so um, 10 Poxwalkers is 2 power, 20 Poxwalkers, which is the maximum unit size, is 4 power. And they've got some nice benefits so that you know they can, depending on who you're going against, if you can get into close combat they can respawn their number um when they destroy a model so it's a nice unit to just try and get in and um hold objectives because again you've got that chance of of boosting the numbers up again and i say for the sake of where well, i pay six power for five plague marines six power could technically get me 30 pox walkers on the table um so in terms of pox walkers, let's see what I've got to go with. When I initially was bringing together all of the Death Guard stuff I had, I think I had a few frames of pox walkers. Um, I've since added on to that with a couple of extra frames that I got from some back issues of uh, Warhammer Conquest. So there was a um, Hatchet Publishing where Hatchet Partworks were doing a Black Friday back issue sale. And I bought some back issue copies to get the, the Poxwalker sprues. And I've also picked up a couple of boxes of the... Um, I don't know if these are the easy to build ones. But the, the box of Death Guard Poxwalkers. Which are a different set of minis to the ones that are on the frame that was with... I think that came from First Strike. Um, so And the ones that came with Conquest. So I've got a few different types of Poxwalkers there. So in total... With the models I've got here, um, I could build 44 Poxwalkers. However, Poxwalkers are in units of 10 to 20. Um, so I'll probably just discard four of them or keep them in case I ever buy some more to make a third squat, a third unit of them. And I'll go for either two units of 20 or that and break down if I want in bigger games. Um, you know, if I really wanted to go swarm of four units of 10. So the only thing with the pox walkers which is going to get me is a sec uh, effectively i've got four lots of the same 12 guys as much as i'm not that bothered about it i would like to put a little bit of variation in so what i'm going to do with these guys is i'm going to do some very simple weapon swaps so where they've got you know a, a club a spike club or something like that i'm going to dig through my bits box i've got some old warhammer fancy battle uh, weapons, sprues and things that are from various different armies like Skaven armies and Chaos and Orc armies that would fit nice as crude um, hand weapons for the Poxwalkers. So I'm going to do some some swaps with those, maybe do a few little bits just to make some of them look a little bit different. 
add a few accessories on here and there from some of the from my, my bits box of Space Marine, Imperial Guard, Death Guard, Chaos, um, bits and bobs, just to give some variation. And then what I can do is I can, I can put them into two squads. And I don't mind if there's a bit of repeating in each across the squads, but in the squads I'll try and have some variations. So the next step will be uh, for me to go and do these, get these built, do the conversions, and then I'll put some paint on them. And I'll come back once I've got these painted and I'll go through the paint process with you. One eternity later. After that brief interlude, I'm back and my pox walkers are now all built and all painted. So hopefully on the screen now you should be seeing some nice pictures flashing up of them. In terms of painting these, it's all contrast paints pretty much. Um, there's a couple of bits where I've, I've you know, dived into some of my acrylics. Um, but mainly it's all contrast just for the speed and also some of the tones I get on the flesh. So what I've done is I've mixed up the flesh tones. I've used mixtures of Gilliman flesh, Dark Earth flesh, as well as some things like uh, Nasdreg yellow. Um, I think there's a few Volpus pink or Shyish pink, one of those ones. So as I said previously when I was building these, because I've got a lot of the same models repeating, and what I didn't want to do is, you know, have essentially a tedious monotony of the same models in the units. I kind of split them into two units. Um, look, it had the, the luxury of having some extra models. I had like 48 and I only needed 40. Um, so I kind of split them into two units and then what I've done is I've picked certain models where I've got duplicates of them and I try to do some scratch builds on them. So for some of them that is changing the weapons out, um, you know, where they may have had um, like a sword like a plague sword I've given them a ball and chain or like this guy there's a guy here I've given them an exhaust pipe um I think which is off an orc bike um some of them are given spike clubs I've also tried to put some themes in across the pox walkers so just looking at the way that they were they were dressed essentially quite a few of them look like they're wearing military so you know um imperial guard uniforms um so I've gone with that, so there's a few of them where I've kind of given them a guard helmet, which I've, I've made sure I've kind of scrubbed off half of the Aquila, uh, and I've used some um, Chaos Brass Etch symbols that I got from Green Stuff, Green Stuff World to add either like a Nurgle symbol or a little Chaos Undivided star. And like this guy here, I've given him a shoulder pad, so an, a shoulder pad which came off I think it was the commander sprue from a bane blade, a plastic bane blade kit. Uh, one of those tank commanders. I've given him a shoulder pad, a helmet with a, a, a chaos and divided sigil, and I've also given him in his hand um, a rifle, as if he's using it as a club. So what I've really liked about building these is the the variety that I get from just doing tiny little changes. And I say I used all sorts of different kits that I had. So as I say, I read in my bits box. I found interesting things that I thought. If, if someone was wanting an improvised weapon uh, on the battlefield, you know, what could they pick up? So that's why there's, you know, rifles, uh, there's exhaust pipes. There's a guy where I've given him an axe that I've made out of uh, a Mark VI Space Marine helmet with an axe head poking out of the side of it, you know, which was attached to the, the, the weapon haft he was already holding. Uh, there's so, Someone's got a, a Space Marine power glove on a stick. Um... You know, little things like that that I could do. And of course, I've tried to, wherever possible, kind of put in uh, little notes to my opponent. So, for example, the Mark VI Space Marine helmet being used as an axe head um, is painted up like a Blood Angel helmet. The Space Marine glove on a stick is painted up like a Space Wolf glove. So that, you know, when I'm playing against Space Wolves or when I'm playing against Blood Angels, which are two of the armies that I face... Um, you've kind of got that little nod to them that maybe there's been a previous battle and one of them's scavengers from the battlefield. So I mentioned obviously the um, like the Imperial Guard, the military theme that I put. The other theme that I picked out was a lot of them look like they're wearing overalls. Um, so I tried to go with kind of some high-vis feel to try and make these look like some kind of factory workers. And again, it also blends in a little bit with some of the kind of Gene Steeler cult uniforms. Uh, that Lee's got in his army, you know, so I've gone for like bright orange, like high vis overalls um, to give that look that because of the way that obviously the pox walkers are generated, you know, these are these are corpses reanimated 
from wherever the battle's been. Um, you know, it gives my Death Guard the feel that they've invaded the city, they've wiped out a, a Manifactorum, and then the Guard have come in, they've wiped out some Guard, and they've raised the dead from that battle to become the Poxwalkers. So I've used the, the Poxwalkers in a couple of games now, um, and I have to say, I really like them. So, obviously, I went with, I built 40, which gives me the option to have um, really two units of 20. I could split them down to four units of 10, um, which would probably be the best in terms of the most for your power. So the power rating for these is up to 10 models is 2 power, 11 to 20 models is 5 power. Um, so you'd think, well, I'll have four units of 10, get that extra 2 power back to spend on something else. However, the way I looked at this, units of 20 with these, the bigger the unit, the easier it is to keep them alive because there's a couple of key rules. So, I mean, the main thing with the Pox is this, they have no missile weapons. So they're purely hand-to-hand -hand combat. And they're, they're, they're a bit rubbish. You know, we, uh, the weapon skills 4 plus, strength of 4, strength of 3, sorry. So they're not doing a lot of damage, you know, when they do get in. It's, you know, however, that's where you want the numbers. You want the numbers to, to work in your favour. Where they do come at their own, though, is uh, they've got a higher toughness, given, you know, they are devout worshippers of Nurgle. So toughness of 4. Um... They've got Contagions of Nurgle, so anybody in close proximity to them, depending on the battle round, uh, is going to suffer toughness losses. So I think it's minus one toughness. So I think it's round one, it's with everyone within three inches, and then it goes up three inches beyond that every round. Um, which again is really good when you've got a few of these units together. Um, it just kind of gives you that little upper hand in close combat. Uh, that you know that you've got these zones overlapping. Um, it really makes it hard for your enemies to get the units moved in close to you. As much as these haven't got like the disgusting resilient um, rule that a lot of the other Death Guard units have got, you know, which is the one that essentially reduces the damage characteristic, and they've got a seven plus save. So essentially, they're not they're not going to get a save against most things. What they do have is uh, unending horde, and that is whenever the unit, whenever a, um, a wound is taken. Yeah, so whenever a unit would lose a wound, you roll a d6. On a 6, you ignore it. So it's essentially, it's a 6 plus invulnerable any time you lose a wound, which is really nice. Um, they also have the uh, the Curse of the walk Walking Pox. So what that is, is any time this unit inflicts a casualty in uh, close combat, if you've lost any models from that unit, you can replace one of your Pox Walkers back to the table with one wound remaining so which means if you can get them in close and again that's where the weight of numbers comes in handy because the you know the, the amount of attacks you throw at something you, you might get something through you're going to lose the toughness slightly with the contagions of nurgle and then you've got the chance to add your your numbers back in the other thing where poxworks are really good is they're a mindless horde so they automatically pass any morale checks again so you can just kind of just keep moving them across the table where they do lack a lot is speed. These have only got a movement of four, so don't expect that these are going to run across the table and seize objectives in turn one or turn two. What these are good though is is just moving them forward as a kind of a shield. If you can get to a close objective with these and just sit on that objective, they're going to take some moving. You know, with the right tactics, Poxwaters can become a massive boon for the Death Guard player. Um, as I say, the few games I've used them in already, I absolutely love them. I'm going to experiment with unit sizes. Um, you know, I might experiment with going with 10s over 20s. Um, just to see what the different the, the, that balance is like. Uh, is it worth splitting two 10s or having one big 20, depending on the game size. As I say though, I absolutely love the unit. I absolutely love what they do. And I'm looking forward to... Uh, getting more games in with these guys especially because when they're on the table they look really nice the only thing i've got left to do with them is to obviously put them on their fancy uh, micro art studio bases however i realized when i was uh painting these i did a quick count up and i'd actually i haven't got enough bases to put these on because when i initially started plotting at the army and buying those bases in of course i had about half the number of pox walkers that i've got now so I'll do another order at Mike Watt Studios. I'll get some more of those bases and then they will get based up. So keep an eye out on the social media because 
when I do get these all based up, I'll put some nice pictures on Instagram, maybe on our Facebook page, uh, and obviously share that through Twitter. So make sure you follow us on those. Make sure you give us a like, share, and subscribe on YouTube and tell your friends about us. Um, as I say, if you're a Death Guard player, remember, chip in below in the comments. Let me know how you've built your armies out. Let me know any good tactics you've got for using Poxwalkers. You know, what is the, the best way to deploy them? How is best to use them? Should I be trying to see the objectives with them? Or should I be using them as just as, as guard units for, you know, other troop choices that I don't want to get um, tangled up in close combat and things like that? So say in the comments below, give me your best hints and tips for using Poxwalkers. And we'll be back soon with more of this blog series as I get deeper into my Death Guard army. So until then, we will see you very soon. Drop.